To get from a kernel of corn to a Johnny cake is a lot of different steps, from growing, harvesting, shelling, milling, to grinding, to a Johnny cake. Each one of those steps captures different people's interest. And then in addition, there's the historic quality of the building, its location, the mill race, the functionality of the stream, and all of those pieces as well. And so volunteers came from throughout the community for each one of those different pieces. The, the grist mill was kind of a, a meeting place. When I came here, we had more fun just grinding, telling stories and everything, and that was the connection. We'd go around to the farmer's market and cook Johnny cakes, and the older people understood what we were doing. You can put maple syrup on it, but you're not doing it any justice. You gotta taste it, and that's the difference. This is Rhode Island Flint corn, it has a nutty taste, and that's what's worth preserving. Yeah, my grandfather grew it, and his father. Yeah, when I was a kid, my father used to bring a grist, and they called it a grist, and they'll bring down a half a bushel or a bushel or something like that, a bag, and then, they grind it. It's just for Johnny Cakes, that's about all. So I'm involved in um, working on the sluice way. Uh, we worked uh, in planning to have the roof reshingled and the sidewalling done on the mill. Um, we've lifted the stones and redressed them, which is a big project. So there's never any shortage, just routine cleaning in the mill. There's never any shortage of project to do here. We run it about four times a year. Uh, and, and everything leads up to that. This whole project is all done with volunteers. No one gets paid, uh, but it's, it's a great community effort to put it all together, and it takes a dozen people, usually, when we do a major grinding. Well, being an engineer, uh, you know, it's just the mechanical uh, ability to turn a 54-inch, 2,800-pound piece of granite with water power always intrigued me and all the mechanics involved. And, well, first of all, we were challenged uh, by one of our clients, Bob Blakely, and he challenged me. He said, if I donate the materials, would you donate the labor? And uh, I gladly accepted. So some of the challenges were, you know, it's a, it's a 300 year old building, so not a lot of straight walls, not a lot of level walls, plumb walls. Everything was a little bit, you know, out of kilter, so to speak. Um, but, you know, that's sort of the unique challenge to us is to is to put that back into a format where it actually looks pretty good and, uh, and obviously extend the useful life. My interest was passing this on to the next generation and so we needed a cheerleader. I consider myself a cheerleader for the Chris Mill. That's all I've done. But I have the gift of gab and I've used it to my advantage. <laughs> <laughs>